would have probably been you know, March, April of 1997 when my dad decided that we should celebrate his tax return by buying something new. Uh, it had been probably about a year ago that, or probably less than a year ago actually, so it was about six months ago that my Sega Genesis was stolen out of my father's house, along with Shining Force 2 and a handful of other Sega Genesis games. So we decided that we wanted something new. So we went out and bought a PlayStation 1. I don't have this PlayStation 1 anymore. In fact, it actually died while I was in college. But we bought a PlayStation 1 and we bought a game for it. Uh, it came with a little demo disc as well, so it's not like it was the only game that I had, but we bought one game. That game is Vandal Hearts. Vandal Hearts was the last game that my father and I really heavily played together. I mean, we played some Wild Arms 1 together, but it wasn't really his type of game. No kitty, don't get to go on. Alright, let's He's being squirming because it's feeding time. Thought you should at least see a cat. Um, not just. Nothing says love like a cat hug. Anyway, so this was, like I said, this was basically the last game that my father and I heavily played together. And <clears throat> the 18th of April, which this is obviously not April. I can't keep the illusion up that long. It's actually July. But the 18th of April is the anniversary of my father's death. Uh, he passed away the 18th of April in 2013. So at this point, eight years ago. And on the 18th of April, again, everything's shifted over by three months due to lots of things, um, I try to start a new game that my father and I played together. Um, this will probably be the last one of these that I do because I'm starting to run out of games that my father and I played together. Unless if I like do a Civilization 1 run or something. Um, anyway, so... Vandal Hearts is a strategy RPG, very similar to Shining Force 2, except one of the major things and the major differences between Vandal Hearts and a lot of other games is that it has plot. Shining Force 2, I will be the first to admit, has what's referred to as an excuse plot. It is a stereotypical, hey, look, you're really going to go save the princess who's in danger. Go save her. And while you're at it, why don't you save the world? That is a plot that could be described as the plot for Final Fantasy 1. That could be the plot for Shining Force 2. That could be a plot for a huge number of medieval fantasy RPGs. And like I said, I'm the first to admit Shining Force 2 had the same type of plot. Vandal Hearts does not have that simplistic of a plot. There is no princess that you are saving. Yeah, you do eventually start working on saving the world, but that's more of an RPG trope than anything else. But it actually has story, and plot, and multi-dimensional characters? What? This is the first, as far as I can tell, the first strategy RPG that actually cared about its story. Not the only one. And... First is coming with an asterisk, because I'm not entirely sure about some of the Fire Emblem releases that happened shortly before this game came out. Uh, the ones that were toward the end of the Super Nintendo era. Having said that, this is definitely the first one that got released in the US, that's for sure. And I love the game. Um, I even had my first website, Vandalier's Heart, based off of the idea of trying to provide a more fluid walkthrough slash fan site of Vandal Hearts. Um, having said that, this is the only game in the series that I've played. There are three games total of the Vandal Hearts series. Again, this is the only one that I've played. And the second one is a game that took a very different direction. Yeah, I'll be talking a little bit more about that later. Um, and the third one was only released on the Xbox Live Arcade, which I don't have access to. So... Let's go ahead and get started on playing Vandal Hearts. Oh yeah. So you're going to notice that things are going to look a little different. I had to change some of my settings compared to Wild Arms 2. So don't be too alarmed if things look a little more different than normal. 
So let's go ahead and get this started. And that's not the PlayStation cover of Vandal Hearts. Oh, one last thing. Recently, as in within the past year, there has been a translation effort for the Sega Saturn version of Vandal Hearts. The Sega Saturn version of Vandal Hearts was only released in Japan, probably because, one, it was not the greatest of ports in the world, but also, two, because by the time that it got released, or ported and released in Japan, the Sega Saturn had started failing in the United States. So a lot of games that may have come over to the U.S. never ended up doing so. I am going to play the Sega Saturn version of Vandal Hearts. That's my unique thing that I'm doing this particular run. Um, you'll notice that I do tend to do unique things when it comes to games that I have utterly mastered. And that is one of them, is that I will be playing the Sega Saturn version. There are differences between the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation versions. Now, you notice that I said Sega Saturn and PlayStation, not US and Japan. So there are some, obviously there are some differences in character names between the US and Japan. Translators always changed characters in this era. But there's actual gameplay differences between the PlayStation and uh, Saturn versions of the game. So those of you that have played Vandal Hearts may in fact notice that there are a couple of differences. They're relatively minor um, beyond appearance and font. This particular translation effort also fixed a lot of the gameplay bugs in Vandal Hearts Saturn. Um, it was a horrible buggy and very low frame rate mess. And to give you an idea of how big of a mess it was, when I first tried to run the game via an emulator, I could only get it to run at half frame rate on my monster of a computer. That's how buggy we're talking. And apparently that was pretty common for the Saturn release. Uh, in addition, there was a major amount of latency between sound effects and, you know, the on-screen image. So you'd end up hearing the sound for something five seconds after you'd see it on screen. You're still going to see a little bit of that, but the PlayStation release also had a little bit of that. So what can you do? Uh, finally, there's some extra content at the end of Vandal Hearts in the Saturn release that isn't in the PlayStation release. So at the end of the game, I will be going through the extra content, which I have not seen at all. I haven't even looked at a YouTube video on it. I intentionally made sure that that would be completely fresh to me. Oh yeah, got one other thing. Music is different. So the PlayStation 1 uses XA Audio. It's a tracker-based audio, very similar to what the Amiga uses, where think of it like MIDI++, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. So you have recorded instruments, and you play that recording of an instrument. The main, that's the way trackers tend to work. MIDI just works via, here's some sheet music, go play it with the instruments you already have. A tracker goes, hey, look, here's my definition of the instrument, now go play it. So it's a more advanced version of the audio. The Sega Saturn doesn't have the ability to do that. So instead, this is using Redbook Audio, which is known as CD Audio. So when we're playing this, we're actually basically playing off the sound. And if somebody is familiar with Vandal Hearts and had looked at the video game official soundtrack for it, you'll notice that the soundtrack doesn't match to the PlayStation release. That's because it matches the Sega Saturn release. So while all the melodies are still the same, the actual content of audio is going to be dramatically different. Um, I've listened to the very beginning parts of it while I was doing the testing on this, and it basically sounds like there's something that I tend to do that's trying to get things to be in the quality of your memory. So you'll notice that I will be running upscalers on things, and this is actually upscaled. Um, I'll be... Increasing audio fidelity to the absolute maximum possible thing that it could have been, even though, like for instance, in the DOS games that I've played, I never owned a um, roll-in sound device of any variety. But I'm playing it with one because what I want to do is try to emulate what people remember in their nostalgia. Kind of playing the nostalgia filter version of games, and that's what I'm going to be doing here. So I have upscaled the Sega Saturn textures. However, I can't upscale it as well as I can for Wild Arms 2. 
Wild Arms 2, I was actually running the textures at 4K, and I could have run it all the way up to 8K resolution textures. I was just recording and playing at 1440p. In this case, while I'm still recording and playing at 1440p, the textures are actually only upscaled to 1080p. Uh, unfortunately, the emulator core that I'm using for this doesn't allow for anything between 2K, or 1080p, and 4K. Even though I'm recording at 1440p, which would be in the middle. And my computer can't actually handle the textures at 4K. I need a more powerful graphics card to emulate the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn is notorious for not being emulated very well. And this is definitely the case. This is also the first time that I will be playing a game that I do not own the console for. Um, I have never owned a Sega Saturn. I want to. But with my upcoming move to Europe, I figured it was probably not a good time for me to pick up a legacy console. Uh, I do actually own this game, for reference. Not just the PlayStation version, but also the Sega Saturn version. I actually own that game with that box art. Uh, that's not a scan of mine, though. I was lazy when I recorded this. So, I don't feel bad. And my housemate owns a Sega Saturn, so I could have just borrowed it, but I didn't feel like it. All right. With further ado, I'm going to pause this recording, feed cats, and let's get started. Okay? Okay. All right, I'm not actually ready yet, but Boo decided to come say hi. So I decided to throw up Kitty Cam and let you see. Let me expand this further. Not sure why it's so low resolution right now. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, because I have a filter on. That would explain it. It. There, that's a little better quality. All right. I can go ahead and put Kitty Cam up there for the time being. Ooh. Cam below, goes below People Cam. Below People Cam. There we go. Game goes above kitty cam. Game. Ah, this keeps happening. It's weird. I may end up having to restart retro. There we go. put kitty above the game I do that at the moment there's nothing there at least oh also um i realized that i actually had my copy of the game a little reflection uh my copy of the game sitting right next to me oh i am mirrored hmm maybe i should change that People cam form your horizontal. Yeah, the only problem is now I'm all the way over to the right, and I don't want to do that. Just, I suppose. Um, you will notice that I will be talking over the music. That's because, one, this FMV that's running over there, completely irrelevant. This is only in the Saturn version of the game. The porters added this. For no reason. Okay. You know I'm good. It has nothing to do with the plot of the game at all. Completely made up. And what is with that animation? Seriously. I'm getting Zelda CTI vibes here. The sword! The sword leaps into the air! And stabs the dragon without the knight using it and absorbs the soul of the dragon? That has nothing to do with the Vandal Heart, trust me. Anyway, yeah, you can see.
if it have the game inside. Although it is playing music from the game. Like a remix slash melody. So yeah, this is the Japanese version of Angel Hearts. With a lot of chucking of the sword and stabbing people in the face and so on, apparently. Um, so for frame of reference, uh, you can't see it on this, but the US release is rated M for Mature. M. Do you know what's mature about this game? And this is not any type of spoiler or anything like that. It's blood. When you kill someone, there is a geyser of blood. If they're a humanoid. That's it. There's the use of the word damn occasionally. Um, and... What else was there? Oh, um, there is one sexual innuendo in the game, to my knowledge. There might actually be two, but it is so lightweight that I know that children's cartoons have less innuendo in them. Save stating here. Um, so, I really don't understand why this got rated mature. Um, yeah. So, first off. Um, oh no, it, ah, uh, hold on a moment. All right, um, so, weird thing about this is that I am playing using a 360 controller. Um, a Sega Saturn has six face buttons on this side, not four. So, it remaps the buttons to some of these upper bumper buttons type of thing. The problem is that Vandal Hearts uses the buttons that it remaps as accept. So I've remapped my controller where I'm only using the buttons that Vandal Hearts cares about, which there's two, four total for reference. That's why I said, oh no, because that meant that it didn't save any of my settings. Okay, so we have our tech speed set to fast and our sound mode set to stereo. Let's go ahead and start our game and kick back and relax for the monologue. Sostagaria. Voices. For over a millennium, the fertile lands in the heart of this vast continent were ruled by the Holy Asha Dynasty, descendants of Toroa the Messiah. However, it is man's doom to forget. Amidst all the wealth and exotic pleasures, the nobility lost their way and sank into corruption and depravity, forgetting even the holy teaching of Taroa. It was in these days of unrest that the citizens, struggling under an oppressive regime, rose up and, under the leadership of Aris the Sage, took up arms against the kingdom. That was the first outbreak of violence in what would later be known simply as the Revolution. I used to have this entire thing memorized, by the way. The royal army's counterattack was swift and fierce, but time and time again they were put to flight by the cunning strategies of Aris and the indomitable will of the advancing Liberation Army. Victory in hand. Trying not to block anything important. Set up a council and work um, to establish the continent's first yeah. democracy. Democracy. So, the Republic of We're in a republic. Not an empire. It's not a kingdom. However, you see what I mean? Paris, it's a very different style of game. Think about me. I came now, from Shining Force 2 to later, this. The shadow of war once again threatens Ishtaria. This was my holy crap, the next generation of games are completely different. With FMV cutscenes? 
Not that this is much of an FMV, it's literally just showing him some lightning. Don't worry, kitty cam's not covering up anything. Have it up or up. Game logo. So, each chapter is going to have the narrator. Um, these are actually additions that the modders made. The little display title. And yes, the game actually does run that slow, even on the PS1 version. This is the point where I finally gain control. What is this place? Hmm, it must be important. Unique sprite. Ah, a hidden room. Boom. That? Boom. 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 That sparkle, this must be it. These rays? What's happening? Ah! Yeah. That entire sequence is already more plot than all of Shining Force 2. Ooh, bad audio there. It really slowed down. Hopefully I won't have too many problems with the sudden release of this game. I'd be upset if I did. Welcome to Chapter 1, Premonition of War. The chapter titles are in the PlayStation 1 version as well, and the translation actually comes from the PS1 version. The loading screens, however, are very different. They actually show character art, character art instead of just the opening fairy blinking. Ash. Ash! Ash! Sorry, I was just thinking. Huh. Better get up. We've got some trouble. <laughs> We're surrounded. <laughs> You're trapped. Don't you know this valley belongs to the fangs of Umbaba? Duh, they're just some dumb p wandering peddlers. Ignorance is the root of misfortune, as they say. You wanna live? Hang over everything you got. Well, eh, we'll probably kill you anyway. <laughs> right, boss? <laughs> I got that right! Duh. You'll notice, all three of these characters have already spoken. We do not have a silent protagonist. And I can turn off the kitty game because the kitty's no longer there. Um, we don't have a silent protagonist in this game. Every character in the game, outside of random mooks that you're just there to defeat, have lines. All of them. So, again, it's a very dramatic change from Shining Force 2. Um, again, I'm going to be limiting the amount of spoilers going through this because... Unlike games like Wild Arms or Shining Force 2, this is not a particularly popular game. And I don't think anyone watching this other than maybe one or two of my friends have ever played it. This game, that is. <laughs> Too scared to talk, baby? That's what I mean by Geysers of Blood, by the way. What the? Is that stupid laugh now? <laughs> now you're the one. Right. <laughs> Who the hell are you guys? Ash Lambert. 16th Platoon, Estarian Security Forces. Uh, Diego Renoir. I'm the same. And Picard. Likewise. Ash? 
Crash in the Black Wind? Sorry, I didn't mean to skip through that. Surrender quietly and we'll grant you quarter. Against only three? Kill them now! Welcome to the first battle of the game. We'll find out just how much my accent randomly varies with all of the characters in the game. There are no hidden characters in this game, by the way. In fact, there's very little optional content, I guess you can say. This is a very linear game compared to Shining Force 2, even. Especially compared to any of the others. Oh, boy. I have to get used to the controls again. Okay. I actually did remap the controls the way I want them to be remapped. Play. Wait, what? There's a widescreen mode? What the hell? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a moment. Hold on. Um, I am so confused right now. I'm not on a CRT, so I think I actually want to display it in default mode. But I don't remember a Saturn actually having a widescreen. Something I'm going to have to investigate later. Um, by the way, this is just going to cover the first battle. I'm probably going to try to have videos be one battle long E. Outside of times where there's like a series of battles that you can't save in between, which I don't think there are any of them. So we can take a look at our characters. Um, we have Ash, whose class is Hero. You'll notice that that is the same class that Shining Force 2, the main character, would have if I wasn't playing the randomizer um, by the end of the game. So, Vandal Hearts is not based off of Fire Emblem, as far as I can tell. It is directly based off of the Shining Force series. So, you're going to see a lot of references to the Shining Force series throughout the game, just in terms of flavor. Not really anything important, so if you haven't watched a game or a playthrough of Shining Force 2, don't worry about it. So, you will notice in the upper right-hand corner by Ash's portrait is an icon. You will notice that Clint has the same icon. But Diego does not. This indicates your class archetype. Uh, in this case, Ash is a sword, as is Clint. Diego is a bow. Um, this does a giant rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. Um, it does a giant rock, paper, scissors type of thing that I will describe sometime later. Probably after we ha when we have all of the... Um, characters available for the base classes, which is going to be a while. Um, we also have spells. You will notice that Ash has magic. It's very light. It's a healing spell. And item. Nobody else has any spells right now because we don't have any other mages. You'll also notice Ash only has 5 MP, and I think Fairy Light might be using 2 or 3. You see? No. Not without trying to cast it. Um, otherwise... You'll notice that there's only three stats, attack, defense, and agility. Attack does what you think it does. It is how hard you hit somebody with your weapon. Defense is how hard you get hit when somebody attacks you. And agility is something related to the percentage chance of you dodging. It does not touch initiative. The reason why, yes boo, is that there is no initiative system in this game. The way Vandal Hearts works is that you go with all of your characters, then the AI goes with all of their characters, then you go with all of your characters, AI goes with all of their characters, and so on. If there is a guest character, if I remember right, they go after your characters have gone. So, like, if there's a guest character in this battle, they would go after Ash, Clint, and Diego go. So, that's the way it works. Um, equipment, you will notice that we have a weapon a helm, and a torso slot. That's it. Those are all of our equipment slots for each character for the game. There is no accessory slot. There is not really a need for one either. I will end up thinking. Um, otherwise, so we've got XP. How much XP you need to hit to your next level. Um, give you an idea. It's always 100 XP to each level. 
Uh, so if I gained 3,100 XP, I would level up 31 times. And yes, it is entirely possible to level up 31 times in one combat. Uh, maximum level for this game is 40, for reference. And yes, I know I just said it's possible to level up 31 times when maximum level is 40. This game gets weird. Anyway, um, other things to note. Uh, not really much else. Oh, um, you will notice that there is a terrain effect. I I'm. It's going to take me some getting used to for the map system. You will notice that we are in an isometric position. Where we're always looking at a corner. I'm rotating the map as little as I can. Uh, which means that when I hit right, I'm actually going down to the right. When I hit left, I'm going up left. Up is going up right. Down is going down left. It gets a little confusing when you're used to other games. So, let's figure out what we want to do. Um... Oh, uh, something else. We can examine a location. Examining does not take an action, but you do have to be stopped on that spot. So there will be times where we want to examine locations in order to find hidden items later on. And I don't even think there are any hidden items in combat. That is one thing I will be looking up in a guide for reference are hidden items, because you cannot go back to any battle in this game. This is a very linear game. You go from battle one to battle two, not back to battle one to grind or anything like that. Uh, one moment. And back once more. I was just double checking to see. Ah, apparently once I choose a character, I have to move with them no matter what. Not what I wanted to do, so I'm just going to reload the save state. Um, there are actually some items on this combat field. And you will always be able to tell because the terrain will look a little weird. Like, for instance, this one thicket here is actually... You can sort of see from the overall view that there's, toward the top right-hand corner, there's a little, like, circle area. That is absolutely an item. Um, northeast corner is... Yes, that is an item. And there's also one in the southeast corner. Do you see the little dot sitting on the ground? Yeah, in this game, the hidden items in the game are usually fairly obvious to see. So the problem is going to be reaching them. On the plus side, they're not really that important, to be honest. But yeah, it's not that dot. It's that dot. And that dot. What was our objective again? Condition. So, defeat in almost every single battle is defeat of Ash, or death of Ash. There can be additional defeat conditions as well, but in pretty much every battle, defeat of Ash is one of the defeat conditions. There are two battles in the game that are an exception to this. I think it's two at least. Um... So our victory condition is defeat of Zutgog. This guy, or no, sorry. This guy. You can tell because he has a unique sprite. Zutgog is a sword-like. You will notice that enemies also have the same classes. And is level one. We are not level one, by the way. This is going to be a curb stomping. So let's go ahead and, well, I'm gonna save state here. Let's go ahead and move Diego and get him ready. So, archers... Attack in a line. Um, this is very unlike Shining Force 2, where archers only attacked two or three squares away. In this game, archer range is dependent on two things. One, promotion level, and two, height. So if I had an archer up really high, my range would actually be really far. In this case, I'm up a little high. Good little animation going on. Um, unlike what it may look like, you cannot block an archer from attacking. In other words, um, oh, that's actually a really bad idea. Oh, um, I should warn you that the save states are going to be a little wonky on this game.
um, facing also matters. So, for instance, the fact that I'm going to be fighting this brigand face on means that I have a lower chance of hitting. The brigand could just dodge. Uh, the reason my save states are wonky is that Saturn emulator is weird. Oh, melee attack, but you will notice that I'm being counterattacked. Every melee attack will have a counterattack. Unless if you kill the target. You cannot prevent your counterattack. You must counterattack. Geysers of Blood. Staple. Um, you will notice that I don't have any control over my facing at the moment. And the reason for that is simple. You don't have control if you're the one that actually killed something. You can also see how far units can move. Which is not very far. These archers are going to be a problem, though. Uh, actually, that one can hit Diego. Yeah. I'm assuming this one can, too. Yeah, probably. So Diego's probably going to be a bit hurt. You'll notice we also have the ability to save. We can change the zoom levels. I usually like playing at distant, but for some reason, the way this is being scaled, my eyes don't like it, so I'm going to actually stay at medium. Um, let's go ahead and turn. Uh, where's the music? This might have been a save state glitch. You'll notice I'm counterattacking at a range as well. Yeah, I'm thinking there's a safe state glitch because I'm not hearing sound effects either. So Clint is going to be attacked. You'll notice that enemies will move over to attack on the sides or on the rear. That's normal. And you'll notice that I counterattacked and got blocked. That's the thing. It happens. There's not much you can do about it. All right. Let's save. Save state here, Colonel Ram, and then I'm going to try resetting the game. Give me a moment. So we are going to save in both internal and cartridge RAM because I'm not actually sure which one works properly. We'll find out, and I'm going to reset. Give me a moment. I suppose I might as well show you while I'm resetting. Again, Saturn emulators are not as staple as PlayStation 1 emulators. So we're probably going to experience a lot of random emulation glitch. Fast forward through some of this. And I know that save states work wonky. Okay, you want to be on camera too? There you go. Yes, you can skip through that video. Just none of the rest of the... Uh... Okay, continue. Okay, we do have the save in battle there. I just want to make sure that both of these show up. They do. Okay, good. I have no idea which one makes more sense. I'm not entirely sure which portrait that is also. There we go. We have music back. Okay. So I'm going to have to remember not to use save states, basically. Okay. We've got a bit of a problem. And that problem's name is Zutgag. Oh, now I can back out. So. Honestly, I don't really care about the items in this battle. One of them is a one-use item. That would be kind of handy, but that's the one in the northeast corner, which I'm not going to reach without killing all the enemies. It's the one that's over here. And I'm not going to reach that, so I'm not going to worry about it. What I want to do is make sure that these goobers don't end up killing me. I may end up needing to remap more, because most king is... Okay. All the way out 
to here. That's about it. What about you, Zoot? Um, something that you will also notice when I'm doing these combats is that I'm going to intentionally drag out combat. Whenever there's a combat like this where my goal is to just kill Zoot, I'm going to use all the rest of them for XP because you can't grind for XP in this... Well, you can. Uh, rephrase. Outside of an exploit, you cannot grind for XP in this game. The best way that you can do it is by either one, fighting the battle repeatedly if you can't win, get to that later, or two, making sure that every single enemy in the battle is defeated in the least efficient way possible. What do we mean by least efficient? Uh, efficient? Well, take this enemy, for instance. It has five hit points left. If I had one of my characters that was only capable of dealing four damage and another character dealing five damage, if I wanted to maximize the amount of XP that I gained, I'd have the character that deals four damage hit it first. Even though that's wasting two actions instead of one, it means both of the characters gain XP. Okay. I have a low chance of hitting, but there's support. Support will increase the likelihood of hitting and or... Okay, gain 38 XP. Ooh. Might as well heal. Ah, it actually costs 2 MP. Oh, right, very light I can only use on myself. Okay. I'm actually going to go a little more defensive. Item, herb, yourself. Herb! When I don't take an action, I do have the ability to have direction facing. I am going to face like that. Saving is so much faster than the PS1 version of the game. So yes, the PS1 version of the game also has the ability to save, but on a PlayStation, you save on a memory card, obviously. Ow. I should have been facing that way, it just dawned on me. Because the two of them are going to be attacking Ash from the side. Oh well. Ash can heal himself, it's fine. Take a turn. Ah, dang it. I thought I was able to hit them both. You'll notice that I one-shot at that. That's because Sword is strong against Bow. Gotta <laughs> love these sound effects. far can you move? Okay, I would want to be there. We'll reach backwise? I can. I don't want Diego to get hit by Zoot because that would hurt a lot. Bad enough I'm gonna get arrowed. And Diego levels up! Whenever you level up, you jump up and down like that and have stars and rainbows. I might have made a mistake by letting Ash be a tank, but I think I'm okay. I think Ash can take this. Yep, I'm right. I mean, Ash is at two hit points, don't get me wrong, it's not great, but... 
And Zoot has a unique attack animation, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Um, let's go ahead and... I kind of like being able to save on both internal and cartridge RAM because it gives me two save slots for in-battle saves. So in the PlayStation 1 version, the way this works is that Vandal Hearts takes up two blocks on a PS1 memory card. A standard PS1 memory card is 15 blocks. Um, those two blocks allow you to have four total save slots. Three regular out-of-combat saves and one in-combat save. So... Okay. Can you hit? No. Crap. Yeah, I did mess up. I may end up just not getting the XP from... Oh, really? May end up just not getting the XP. Ash, let's have you move way back behind this tree. And heal yourself. Unfortunately, you decided to be an idiot and put your back toward where Zoot came into. Build 40. That's nice. And Ash levels up. So the way XP works in this game is very different from the way it works in most strategy RPGs. What it does is that you'll notice that the enemies have a level. These enemies are level one, of course, but the enemies have a level. Yeah, Clint's gonna die. Really? This is really bad luck. Oh, you're going after Ash instead. Never mind. The AI is an idiot. Sweet. I can maximize XP this way. Um, the way you gain XP is a comparison in levels between the actor and the target. So, for instance, that was a counterattack. So the actor was Ash, the target was Zoot. So in this case, Zoot's level 1, Ash is level 6. So I gained 5 XP. Or 5% of level. Um, when you heal it does the same thing. So if you're healing yourself, it is you as the actor and you as the target. So it's a level five compared to a level five. So we actually gained, in this case, about 40 XP, which is really nice. It means that if you heal three times in a combat, as long as it does something, because I believe it does actually have to do, yeah, it does actually have to do something, you'll level up. You see what I mean yet by, there? you can't grind, but you can exploit grinding. Let's go ahead and make our save. I'm going to be saving quite frequently, I'm going to guess. And these battles won't be anywhere near as slow later on. I'm just talking quite a bit. You die now. <coughs> and explaining things as I'm going right toward the beginning. Flint levels up. That was my goal, was to get everybody to level up at least once. And twice is basically impossible. Um, the Diego is a lower level than... No, do not play with med medication. Content. Yeah, Diego is a lower level than Ash, so I'd rather have Diego attack. And goodbye, Zoot. Arrgh, don't kill me! Arrgh, don't kill me! I'm bleeding with you. You got 29 XP. You win. Oh, that's actually slightly different than the way it works in the PS1 version. So the battle results are how you get money. You'll notice that nothing dropped anything during the combat. You only get money at the end. You get money based off of, if I remember correctly, the level of each of the enemies. And bosses give twice the amount of money if I remember correctly and then you subtract the amount of money it costs for every character of yours that died because technically they retreat but really they're dead and you're paying for the resurrection costs if I remember right it's 200 gold per level of the character that died so for instance if the AI wasn't an idiot and actually had killed Clint here I would be losing 200 gold 
that does mean that it is possible in this game to not get enough money to keep up. However, there's a catch-up mechanic. Namely, if you are defeated, you start the battle over. It is a game over. It is not a thing like Shining Force where you go back... Or, sorry, there's not a catch-up mechanic is what I meant to say. Um... It's not like Shining Force 2 where you end up going back to the last town that you saved in or anything. Nope. It's game over reload. So that is the one major complaint that I have of Vandal Hearts mechanically is you can get stuck. It is entirely possible for you to get stuck. It's unlikely. You'd have to do something really dumb like sell all of your equipment and then save. So I don't feel too bad about it. That should teach you guys something, uh... Huh? Oh, sorry. Diego's supposed to be smarmy accent. That should teach you guys, uh... Huh? You, I knew I saw you before. Zutgog! Gog? Gotch? I think it's Gog. What? The same suit Gog we threw in jail just two months ago. Yep, same bonehead grin. <laughs> Don't you recognize him? Hmm, my pleasure is all mine. Wait a minute. Sorry. Wait a minute. Only two months and he's already out? Oh, must have busted out. True. I don't think for a minute that this loser would be able to break himself out of prison. <laughs> Takes a snake to know a snake. There's people out there who really know my worth. What does that mean? Answer me. Nothing, I'm just mumbling. Burp, 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 burp. Uh, I think I've got it. Bandits have shut off all trade in this valley. Whomever freed him is probably reaping huge black market profits. A crooked politician or a merchant pulled strings. Yeah, what else is new? Urgh. Yeah, up. Did I put an arrow through him right now, Ash? No. Okay. No! Stop! Hold it, Diego. Killing this flea is not an answer. Our job's finished here. All we had to do is capture him. Let's go back to Shumeria. So, each of these videos, I think I'm going to play through one combat. And then save the moment I get to a point where I can save, like this. You'll notice that I have actual slots to save, and in this case, I have six slots. On the PlayStation 1 case, I'd have three per memory card, because I can create a new save file on both memory cards, so it's very similar. All right, and we have finished Chapter 1, Scene 1. Ash is level 6. That is the only level data that is stored inside of the memory card title itself. Fairly typical. I hope you've enjoyed this first look at Vandal Hearts. I will be playing through this entire thing. I'm going to look up how many chapters and scenarios we're going to have. I want to say it's something like 26. Uh, let's see, there's a table of contents over here. Um, That's 34 plus the secret stuff. Okay, so this is going to be like a 40-ish episode series, but each episode is going to be a little shorter than normal. Obviously, this one I spent a full hour because over half of it, I was talking about the game. <coughs> um, please keep information about the game in future stuff in the comments with spoiler tags. While I've definitely played through the game many times, or the PS1 version of the game many times, I should say, I want this to be a fresh experience for people. So, until then, hope you've had a nice kitten today, Internet, and I'll talk to you next time. I don't know why I turned off kitty cam. She's being cute. Being just a round cinnamon roll of cuteness and claws and biting. Bye, Internet.